Hey everybody, and welcome to another Star Citizen video. My name is Scary Spikes, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Vanguard Hoplite from Aegis Dynamics. Before we get started, though, a huge thanks to all of my wonderful channel members and patrons that make videos like these possible. If you'd like to help me, you can do so directly by clicking the link in the description below, which will take you over to my Patreon page, or you can click on the blue join button down beside the subscribe button under the video to become a channel member here on YouTube. Thank you so much for all your support. Let's go ahead and get started with this video. The Aegis Dynamics Vanguard Hoplite is one of four specialty heavy fighters produced by Aegis Dynamics. This one in particular is a transport ship and it can transport six people and their weapons in relative comfort into and out of battle while still acting like a heavy fighter with some very decently sized weapons on the front as well as a turret on the top. It comes from a line of Vanguard ships that Aegis Dynamics released quite some time ago so they are a little bit aged but they all have their roles to serve, including the Sentinel, which is the electronic warfare variant equipped with an EMP, the Warden, which is just a straight up badass fighter, and then of course the Harbinger, for which I've already made a video, which is the bomber variant. As always, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the exterior tour by taking a look at the exterior features of the craft, including the weapons and turrets, as well as ingress and egress points. And then of course, we'll have a look inside, looking at all of the components, the seating, and of course the cockpit, followed by wrapping it up with Urkel.Games and taking a look at how I would make this thing better from the factory. Little disclaimer though, I'm not a stat nerd or a number cruncher, so what I pick is largely going to be my opinion based on my own playstyle, and if yours is different, that's totally okay. There are going to be timestamps in the description as well as chaptering in the seek bar, so you can skip to whatever part of the video you like. It's really difficult not to notice the massive assortment of guns on the very front end of this thing, and of course the other Vanguard variants as well. The very first thing we're going to look at are the size 2 weapons here. Now, these are fixed size 2 weapons on the nose. The bad news is their range is pretty bad and their damage is not fantastic, but there are quite a large number of them, and so that definitely helps to compensate. Now, we've got another ship hanging out here, so hopefully he's friendly as we continue to look around, but these weapons can be replaced if you're looking for different types of ammo, including ballistic, uh, energy and others so you can definitely choose your flavor unfortunately you can't make these guns gimbaled which is a bit of a problem if you're not a very good pilot like myself now down here we have a very large gun indeed this is going to be a size 4 revenant gatling gun and i should add that these weapons do differ including the size 2 weapons based on the type of vanguard that you pick up so on the hoplite we're going to have this ballistic gatling gun here and this is of course going to be a size 4 in a size 5 gimbal. You can of course remove the size 5 gimbal and just put a size 5 fixed weapon there, but again, if you happen to be a pilot like me who's not particularly great at flying, then you might want to keep the gimbal at least for now as you get used to things. Looking at the front end of the ship working towards the port side, we see that we have a number of inlets here as well. This is actually really cool and it gives the ship a very old school kind of vibe, very fitting considering when it was released. We have this engine cowling here, which kind of looks like a ramjet engine, sort of, with a turbine there. I'm not sure that that's very functional, but it definitely does look the part and looks really, really cool. As we come around the port side of the vessel, we're going to see some very interesting things, namely with the landing gear. Now, this is not very unusual. The front landing gear, that is, we've got four wheels there in a single configuration, internally stored just under and behind the main cockpit. But as we start to look towards the rear, rounding out the tricycle configuration on this particular vessel, we start to see things that are very unique. And one of those, of course, is that we have three wheels on each side, but especially that we have a track over each set of three wheels. I'm not really 100% sure how this would translate into practicality for this particular ship, especially as physics go within Star Citizen, but it's definitely very unique and interesting and something that no other ship except for the line of Vanguard ships from Aegis have. So definitely very unique and a cool aesthetic, especially when you consider the rest of the vessel as well. As you may have seen in the intro of the video, these wings are swept back, but they do come out when you bring the landing gear up. This makes atmospheric flight a little bit easier and quite a bit more aerodynamic, and it makes landing a lot easier, especially since your silhouette is quite a bit smaller and it allows you to get into tighter spaces. Giggity. Now, as we move from the port side to the rear end of the ship here, we can see that we have two large surfaces and I could only describe them as combination vertical horizontal stabilizers that help to mitigate negative flight characteristics while this thing is in atmosphere. 
Now, I'm not 100% sure if it actually plays along with the physics system as described there, but at least it looks really cool. There's two of them on each side, and they come out of the top and the bottom of their respective engine cowlings. As you can see here, the larger of the two has a nice Aegis Dynamics logo on the top, and the bottom one does not. In either case, they look really cool, and they do really add to the aesthetic of the ship. It's something that I really quite like. And finally, on the rear of the ship here, we have our main ingress and egress point in the form of this ramp. It's very easy to use. There's no buttons or anything as this thing is pretty old school. Hopefully we will get one at some point, but to open and close it, all you need to do is hold F to open up your inner thought menu. You might need to move a little bit closer and then use your left mouse button to click it open or close. The starboard side of the vessel is pretty much unremarkable as it's exactly the same as on the port side, including all of the features with respect to landing gear, folding wings, and so on. And last but not least, on the top of the ship, we do have a turret that one of your buddies can jump into, and we'll talk about upgrading those weapons a little bit later on in the video. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at the interior of the hoplite. We're going to go ahead and get started in the airlock here. And yes, I said airlock. I'll explain that in just a second. But we're going to get started right at the ramp here, which is the only ingress and egress point out of the ship. You can, of course, access it, as I said before, with the F key using your inner thought menu to open and close it with the left mouse button once you're holding F. We're not going to be doing that just because I'm in space, so we're going to go ahead and move on to the next step here. I'm just going to show you the quantum drive, which is the first component that we can see, which is stored just above where the ramp is in the rear end of the ship. Now, we're not really at the age yet where we're able to physically take these things out and change them out. We still have to do that uh, through a menu, but hopefully at some point soon we'll be able to do that in the future. I did mention this was an airlock, and it is an actual airlock because we do have a door here. That'll close and that'll make sure that everything is nicely sealed inside. Now, once we're in here, this is the main area, the main seating area for the troops, as well as some of the storage, access to the turret, access to the flight deck, and then, of course, also access to the weapons, which, speaking of which, I'm going to go ahead and grab my P4 here. And this is a really cool little spot, honestly. It's uh, pretty roomy for six people and all the equipment and stuff that you can store here. You can see that on the port side of the ship, we've got four seats. And on the starboard side, we've only got two, with one of the base here being taken up by 10 gun racks, as well as uh, various miscellaneous storage that you can see there. Now, that storage is also available above the uh, seats here, as we can see on both sides of this compartment. Unfortunately, I don't think it's properly implemented where you're actually going to be able to place boxes and stuff in there. At the moment, you're probably only going to be able to place things like MREs and water bottles with the place command through the inner thought menu. But hey, it's nice that it's there. Hopefully, it'll be implemented in a future patch. These seats are pretty cool. They do actually look really nice considering how Aegis is more of a function over form kind of company. I do really like that these actually look fairly comfortable. They do also have those uh, over-the-shoulder roller coaster restraints, which are pretty cool, and they do work uh, pretty pretty well. They're not bugged here like they are on the Prowler, which you may have seen in my previous video. And you can get in through the typical means of using F and your left mouse button and exit through uh, the typical means of pressing Y, of course, as everywhere else. We do have some lighting in here as well, which is very nice. And then, of course, we do also have access to the turret in the center of this compartment. Now, you might uh, have to fight with this a little bit. Uh, the best way to access this turret is simply just to walk up into... Uh, just the undercarriage of it here, just underneath it. Look straight ahead, hold F, and then uh, move around a little bit, and you'll see Enter Turret just kind of floating there. I do wish there was a better way to do this, like if there was a button somewhere nearby. Um, but for now, that is the only way to do it. If we move a little bit more forward here, uh, we can see that we have a little staircase. There is also another door. Uh, which you can manually close and open. It's got a little window on there, which is nice. Um, but what's really cool is you also have this little secret cubby here. If I don't trigger the door by mistake, there we go. And you can open this again, as I said, uh, in the same way that you can interact with pretty much anything else in the ship. And we have a little container here to store any of your goodies, legal or otherwise. You can go ahead and close this up whenever you're ready. Of course, uh, it's very, very common to trigger the door when you do this. So just be careful. And then we'll go ahead and move up and check out the rest of this. I'm going to turn on my light here so you guys can see what everything looks like. We've got the shield generator and the power plant on this side. And again, you can access these the same way as before with your inner thought system. And we've got a little uh, cubby here that we can also access. So you can put some things in there like water bottles and things like that. In the back here, we don't see too much. Not too much going on in the ceiling as far as I can see. There are some panels there. I don't believe they're actually accessible. But then we have another shield generator and power plant here. 
And then we've got our coolers, lastly, over here in these panels. All right, so let's go ahead and close these up and take a look at the cockpit and see how everything looks. Uh, sometimes these can be a little tricky to close up, but there we go, we've got them. So again, we're going to go ahead and have a seat here, and we're going to take a look at the instrumentation that we have in the cockpit. It's very similar to uh, what you would find in other ships. Let's go ahead and actually put the auto throttle on so we can cruise on out of here just so we don't get jumped. And then we'll have a look at the displays. So, of course, the UI is very common between all of the ships that you may have seen. This was implemented quite a while back, I believe, in 3.14. And then, of course, we do have the standard Vanguard layout. This is actually very similar uh, to that of the uh, Redeemer, which if you've flown that ship, you may have seen that. It looks very, very similar to this. We do have a throttle over on the left-hand side and a center stick right in the middle. We've got what looks like uh, potentially like AC controls here, but you can see as we hover over them, they do different things. They're responsible for the engines as well as the power. So that's actually pretty cool. It, it would be cooler if it was AC, but uh, I, I digress. Now, we also have four big displays here. These, of course, can be customized to your heart's desire uh, simply by clicking on the menu button there, and you can change them to whatever it is that you like. Now, sometimes they do bug out on me, so uh, just keep that in mind. You might need to play with them. You may need to restart the ship in order for these to work. But you've got four big ones here, and then, of course, you've got a nice three-dimensional radar right in the middle. Uh, other than that, we don't have too much else. We've got a pretty good view outside the ship all around. There is a, a little bit of obstruction, but it's not too bad. And then lastly, at the very top here, we do have an annunciator panel, and that's going to show you anything that's critically wrong with your ship, like your uh, engines, for example, or your shields or target locks or things like that. Alrighty, everybody. So here we are on Urkel.Games checking out the Hoplite, and uh, we're going to go ahead and get started with weapons as usual. But as usual, a very quick disclaimer as before, these are going to be my own picks for my own playstyle. They are not necessarily the absolute best right now or for this patch or for the meta. In fact, I would not recommend anybody to be getting anything, air quote, for the meta, end quote, because things always change. Just get stuff that plays well with you and your playstyle, and if you enjoy it, that's all that matters. Okay, so first of all, we have the size 5 gimbal here. This is what I've mentioned. We've got the Revenant Gatling, uh, which is a size 4 ballistic Gatling gun underneath. Now, while this is decent in terms of on paper, in my experience and in the experience of many of our community members on Discord, the ballistic weapons at the moment are not doing fairly well, and I personally am not a big fan of ballistic weapons just for the sake of having to get ammo for them constantly. I just don't want to have to bother with that or worry about that. I want to go out there and shoot stuff dead and know that I've got enough left over to shoot some more stuff dead later on if I want to without having to pay to rearm. So... That being said, if, uh, if this is something you like, you can, of course, leave it. Uh, my preference is going to be to change it over. And I would typically go with a Rhino here, which is what I would recommend if you want to go with the gimbal. So if you want to keep the gimbal and you don't want to go fixed, you want to go with a size 4, the Rhino is definitely the best. Um, but if you want to go with a size 5, what I'd recommend is actually the Omni Sky Cannon. So we're going to go ahead and search this here. There it is. That is the Omni Sky Laser Cannon. And the reason why I recommend laser cannons above uh, repeaters at the size 5 and above is because at size 5, laser cannons tend to do quite a bit more than repeaters in terms of damage, and they typically scale very well at and above size 5. So I'd recommend that if you really don't like laser cannons, you can totally go with the Rhino, and you'll still do a pretty good job. Now, these are going to be the size 2 weapons that I was talking about before. These are the fixed weapons on the front of the nose. And like I said, these are fairly proprietary. You don't really see anything else in here of a size 2, like, you know, a Badger, for example, or something like that. So we uh, we have a choice in terms of the types of damage that we want to deal, uh, not necessarily in the different types of weapons, since they're all going to be very similar. Again, the only difference is going to be the type of damage. So in my experience, again, I feel that uh, repeaters at this size are pretty good. So that's what I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with the uh, what looks like the GVSR. That is going to be the laser repeater here. So we're going to go ahead and type in GVSR. This is a really nice feature here as well of Urkel.Games. You can just kind of make things really easy for yourself by searching things and putting things where you want them uh, and putting on the components that you need. So technically, we do see a drop off a little bit of DPS here. Um, but at the end of the day, this is what works for me, right? So if the ballistics work for you, by all means, keep them on there. 
Okay, so next we're going to be looking at the turret. And we do have a man turret here. And it looks like we have a pair of size 2 weapons up top. Uh, now again, size 2 weapons, I do prefer to have uh, some laser repeaters. So we're just going to go ahead and search CF. And there's the 227 Badger. And that's what I'm going to choose. Again, whatever creams your Twinkie, whatever you want to put on there, <laughs> feel free. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose the Badger since that's something that I am both comfortable and familiar with. And so that's going to be my reason for going with that. Now, we're going to look at the missiles. And uh, the good news is, uh, you, even with the missiles, not so much on the not, not so much on the Hoplite, a little bit more on the Harbinger. But even on the Hoplite, you do have a good choice of missiles. We have uh, uh, some missiles here. We've got the 442 and the 442 again. So that's telling us that we have a size 4 rack with four size 2 missiles. So as you can see, we have the Ignite twos in here and the ignites are pretty decent i think i would change these out for dominators if it were my call and we already have dominators in the second uh the second launcher here so you can change these out if you want them uh to have other missiles in them i honestly think for what you're going to be fighting which is going to be incidental combat in the hoplite i don't think you're going to be looking for trouble but for a uh, size two missiles in each uh one of these is going to be absolutely fine it's going to be a total of eight missiles altogether. I really don't think you're going to need more. If you feel like you're going to be in dangerous territory and you're going to be fighting, uh, you know, bigger stuff and you, you want less missiles, but a little bit more, you know, uh, damage with each hit, then you could go uh, with something different. You could go with maybe like a, let me see what, what else we got here. We can go with a 423, for example, right? That's going to give you two size three missiles, but then you're only going to have uh, four of them all together, or you're going to have two size threes and four size twos if you choose not to make it uniform between the two launchers in my opinion i think uh the two uh the dominators or the two, uh, the size two dominators are very nice you've got four of them in each launcher and that, that should be more than adequate for most things now again of course if you're going to be fighting smaller things and you want more missiles the dominators are too big then you can conversely go the other way you can go with the 481 and then you can have 16 uh size one missiles on here so it's really uh, very very easy to configure the missile system on this ship and i really really do quite like that but without digressing more here we're going to go ahead and move on to the shields and as you can see the majority of the stuff we have uh pairs of size twos with the exception of the quantum drive so let's go ahead and start looking at the shields for the size two shields i like my frs uh they're pretty good they're right up there in terms of uh, hp and uh, they have a pretty good regen so i'm going to go ahead and go with that now i know that the majority of the shields haven't you know been changed too much since everything was normalized several patches ago so a lot of the stats are very similar if not the same between same size shields but that being said i'm going to go with the frs again i've had good experiences uh, and they are pretty good for my particular needs now uh, we do have uh, some power plants here as well we have two power plants so we're going to go ahead and click in here and we have a couple of options here uh, now for me the JS series is usually what I go with but we can go with a couple of others here now what, what's important here is you don't always want to go with something that gives you the most power you want to go with something that has uh, a pretty good ability of delivering that power quickly and efficiently to your other systems now again in my personal experience that's been the JS it's not the absolute highest in power output but it delivers power pretty quickly and that's what I enjoy so that's what I'm going to go ahead and choose so we have that and I do believe in the size two, we may also have the Quadracell MTs, uh, which are also pretty good. So if you can't find the JS series, the Quadracells are also pretty good. But again, go ahead and choose whatever you desire here based on, you know, the stats that you can see inside of Urkel.Games and how those correlate to your game style and your method of playing. Right, so let's go ahead and move on to the coolers. Finally, uh, the second last thing we're going to be taking a look at, the Arctics are not too bad again. Uh, I like to change these out. The snow packs are going to be very expensive, so if you've got money to burn, uh, the snow packs are good. Just keep in mind, by the way, that uh, the very, very imminent patch, the 3.17.2 uh, patch, will be coming very soon, and that will be bringing a database wipe sans rep. So you want to make sure um, that if you want to try some stuff or whatever, uh, that you do it now, because that's going to give you the opportunity to try it and uh, then there's going to be a wipe. So all the, all the money is going to be wiped anyway, so it doesn't matter. But the snow packs are what I would definitely choose if I had a choice. But the avalanches are also pretty good. They're also quite a bit cheaper. For my personal taste, though, because I do have a little extra money here, we're going to go ahead and go with the snow packs. And those are going to provide us some really good cooling. And uh, they're probably, I think, uh, class leading here, if I'm not mistaken. They're definitely the best. 
uh, and when it comes to overall cooling. So we're going to go with that. And uh, then with regards to the quantum drive, the cross field is actually very, very solid. Honestly, the, the cross field is a really nice, pretty economical drive. It's not the slowest, but it's also not, uh, you know, um, it, it's not the best one overall. But the cross field is very good for fuel economy. It's pretty good for speed and for acceleration. And if we look at some of the other ones here, we do have a couple of other options. Now, you could go with a Spectre if uh, that is in here. There we go. Or where was the Spicule, I believe it was, for size 2. And there it is. Okay, so the Spicule, that is going to be your stealth drive. Now, that is going to be really, really good for getting yourself from and to spaces that are very, very close to each other. So if you're just going between... Uh, one of the uh, moons orbiting a planet of your choice, like for example, from Hurston over to Ariel, and you're making little hops like that, these stealth drives are wonderful for that because not only do they decrease your signature, but they're also going to allow you to get there very quickly because they accelerate faster than pretty much any other drive to their top speed, even though their top speed isn't the best one out there. If you're just looking for something that is a good long distance or it's uh, something that's good for economy, the cross field is really good. And if you're looking for just pure speed, the XL1 is the way to go. Now, this is going to burn a lot of fuel. It's probably going to cost you a little extra money. But the XL1 is the absolute best in this case because it will be the fastest from point A to point B, especially at a longer range. Now, as always, we do have some options for paints here. This is going to be, of course, up to you, but let's just go ahead and pick one for fun. Well, that's going to do it for this video, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. And if you did, you can help me out in a big way by making sure to like the video, share it with your friends and communities, become a subscriber with notifications turned on so you don't miss any of my future weekly uploads. And of course, come and hang out with us on Discord. We've got a wonderful community there and we would love to see you there. And of course, in the next video.